So, okay. if, so if it was Ryu, no, I don't know. You would do shit. My grill is kind of warm. <laughs> Your grill. <laughs> <laughs> So, some of that Korean barbecue. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to start this shit live. The only time I caught the Holy Ghost when I was in church drinking. Like, they're two dumb dudes. Welcome to the latest episode of Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Uh, I feel like we should change the name of the podcast to Two Dark Dudes. <laughs> <laughs> shit, you're going to be light in like another three three hours. Nah, bro, this is, listen, man, I was walking around like... Just, just feeling like, I was like, you know what? Let me just do this experiment. See how Chris Brown lives every day. Shit. You know, I was nice and toasty. Did you have the cocoa butter on? You got to have cocoa butter. Nah, I didn't have the cocoa butter. I was uh, lucky. I, got, I put aloe. That's the only thing that stopped me from really, really peeling. Black people don't wear aloe. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's cocoa butter. Or Crisco. So, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Need that shine, baby. <laughs> Now you're looking like Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, with that being said, welcome to the latest episode of Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. It's your boy, Sarat, a.k.a. Mikazi. And your boy, Chris Brown, a.k.a. Red Ford Delta. How's everybody doing out there? Well, I mean, if you're hearing the jokes right now, it's because we just came back from vacation. Indeed. It was, it was your boy's big 4-0. So we got, went on one of them do-it-big trips. Grand Hell, yeah. Granddad yeah, yeah. went out and do a big trips. For real. That shit was live too. Bro, it was, yeah. Everything. Family, family. It was it was a big family trip. And what I thought a family trip was going to be, it was that plus more. Plus, plus more. Hell yeah. yeah. It was everything. Like, man, if all family trips were like that, man, I would be like, everybody needs to go on a big family trip. We just didn't have no, no, no fights, which is yeah. good. No TV, yeah. no TV fights. <laughs> we need that. We need those hood moments. Yeah. It, it or as like- they say in boondocks. You know, a, a, a nigga moment. I can see it. <laughs> oh man! If there would have been anyone, it probably would have been you. Was you and Saran? Why? Just more shit talking. I mean, if there would have been any type of like well, altercation, so to speak, it'd probably be between you two. Oh, well, there was one time when we were we were leaving the bar. I think after you guys had walked back early, we went to the we went to go grab one more drink. Mm. And as we were leaving, we just heard over like the people with the walkie talkies or whatever. We just. Mm-hmm. Heard, yeah, 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 I get, yeah, they're leaving right now. We're just like, like what yeah, maybe get the I, eye on us for. Yeah, maybe I'm talking about that because Seren came back and he was he was pissed about something. Yeah, but yeah, I heard I heard this story about Seren. Well, from the tripper, something from before. Uh, this, this from before, because like, oh. Dirk, so it was at his. Uh, he was he was just part of a wedding party. Okay, like, you know, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I went back home for the bachelor party, and you know they were you know putting bachelor party plans together mm-hmm. and they were like they're like yo don't let don't let Serena around the strippers we don't need another stripper mad <laughs> wow Re- wow really uh, and then apparently and so I'm putting people's business out there but fuck it <laughs> <laughs> okay apparently they were all out at the strip club one night and I guess they were saying that one of the strippers was just hanging out with them, talking, whatever. Mm-hmm. And Serena's drunk ass came walking up and just kind of like slapped her on the back. Like, hey, what up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> she spilled her drink all over herself. So she was like, motherfucker. Damn. <sighs> Poor Seren. I was like, Seren, come on, man. That's she on the job. You can't well, at least well, at least didn't smack her ass. <laughs> she might have liked it though, if she's a stripper. Just saying. I don't know, man. I was like, how are you gonna just come up with hey, what up, buddy? <laughs> oh man uh, I mean but you know Strin, Serin and my brothers in the, in the strip club they don't do that often okay mm-hmm. you know, you, if you ever saw them in a strip club you might think it's multiverse Serin and Serin you know okay yeah because you know they don't do that often so it might be it might be a clone or a different version of them in there which mm-hmm. kind of leads into the movie we were talking about this week because this movie is Near and dear to your heart, near and dear to my heart because it's my favorite superhero. Well, so yeah. Version of my favorite superhero. We talking about across the Spider Verse. This shit was dope, like phenomenal. Look, I I, I told you this. Phenomenal. Out of all the Spider Man movies that have come out since Tobey Maguire, to all the way up to this one, I think this has to be the best one. Even though it's cartoon animated, whatever. 
the shit was so fucking raw. Okay, so the storyline, everything. Okay, so storyline aspect and all that stuff, I'll say I think yes. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like I said, it's it it, it has that unfair advantage of being an, an animated movie. Yeah, so it's because- not gonna cost as much. And like you could just do shit that you can't do in live. Action. Yeah, I figured that because you know you can animate, you can draw how you want. They want you want them to move and everything else. Mm-hmm. But the, the shit was just raw, though, man. Like, yeah, the, the first thirty minutes kind of got me because of all the fucking flash and everything. Mm-hmm. Once that settled down and it got into the show, into yep. the movie, yeah, yeah, that's the exact, that's same thing I thought. Like the first twenty minutes, you're just you're just adjusting to it. Yeah, and then you know once that settles, you're like, oh, okay, now we in for it. Yeah, hell yeah. Man, what a fucking ride. Man, man, man. Ride. Man. Oh, man. You know, before we get into this, you know, obviously, like... Oh, yeah, you know, we got to, to have a drink. Yeah, well, I mean, some of us are making changes in our life. Indeed. You know, so, you know, we might have to, for the audience, if y'all watching, y'all might have to keep, you know, some of us, you know, accountable. Look, look, if I drink all of this, then that's just what I fucking drink. Oh, well. I don't know how much that is, but fuck it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Chris, Chris hey, this, instituted some life rules for himself. This is the, hey, I told you, this is the model, you know what I'm saying? When I'm not, when I'm not socially engaged, mm-hmm. then, you know, I keep it to a certain limit. Yep. Doing shit like this, being out, whatever, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to enjoy engaging, it. We're engaging with social media. This is, our, yeah. this is our crew, whoever's watching right now, y'all are our crew. So, yeah, it's a social moment. But, yeah, it's we're both of us. I've, I've come to realize that the last, you know, few months, I think I wasn't drinking too much but i was grabbing alcohol more often than i used to i just mm. dial that back a little bit yeah so with that being said what are you drinking well as i just showed you i got my half a bottle of jack daniel and today i'm gonna try what was in the store called a pirate water the flavor of bahama mama okay boy is that like a seltzer is that a beer i like the i actually like the packaging um honestly they were sitting right there right when i walked into the door um I'd imagine it's a hard sell. The fact that it says uh, Bahaba Mama, I'm guessing it's like a daiquiri type, maybe, or oh, just as a malt beverage. So who knows? But it's got 10 percent alcohol by value. Yeah, damn. One pint. Fuck. I might be. My body's gonna be like I'm replenished <laughs> after this one. <laughs> after this one. You were like Super Mario and the mushrooms. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh man. Uh, what about you? What you got? All right. So uh, I was for my birthday. I was gifted. Because after, you know, all our festivities, whatever, the last day of work, I was in Lexington, Kentucky, Mm -hmm. you know, bourbon country. Mm. So I was actually gifted a bottle of bourbon that I've never seen before. Mind you, I've already cracked it open, so I know I like it. But this is the first time I'm shooting it. But this is the uh, Basil Hayden. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bright. My light's a little bright, but. Tilt the bottom back, so. No, I say tilt it back. I was trying to see the, um. That's two right now. The emblem, the the silver thing on the front. What is it? Like a belt buckle or something? Yeah, it's like a BH belt buckle kind of thing. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, a nice classy looking bottle. Classy yeah. looking bottle. Not bad. I I drank this the other day on the rocks just to taste it. Mm-hmm. It was nice. It's a really nice sipping bourbon. Okay, nice. Today I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, but, cool. But, <clears throat> like I said, we are stepping into the multiverse, mm-hmm. Spider Verse. So. This might not be, you know, normal Surat. This might be multiverse Surat. Why? Because today, oh, shit. You gonna, touch, you gonna touch your black side? You more blacker? No, 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 no. I'm, I think today I might, I might be followed the pops. Holy fucking shit! What? what wow! You're gonna drink a beer? Not only a beer, Michelob Ultra. Okay, this is fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, who are you? You are you are definitely not Surat. <laughs> like I said, we're gonna try to do this differently today. Just 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 for a try. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I might regret it. I'm probably gonna regret it, but hey, if I don't have that, then you know, obviously I got my, my fit aids. Oh shit. But yeah, we're gonna give this a shot. All right. All right, so well, I'm gonna crack five, it five. and sip it first, but then I'm gonna pour it on a cup of ice. Just to see. My shit's coming straight out the can, because it is what it is. It's it's it's, it's butt water. It is just, huh? That's what, what it is. Are you talking about the beer? Yes. Oh yeah. I'm just not a big fan. Sorry, sorry, Michelob. I'm just not. Maybe make a uh, if you make a hard cider, I will drink that all day. He wants some fruity shit. That's all. 
Man, listen, I want some case good shit. <laughs> yes, like I said, oh, we do a shot first. Yeah, we gotta do a shot. It's just the way it goes. That's what we do. That's just the rules of the podcast. Sorry, I know you're trying to get right, but not today. No, no I'm gonna get right. <laughs> I'll tell you, when we saw, when we was hanging out uh, for our birthday, you know, we went on this water excursion. I was like, Chris, man, you're looking, you're looking slim on the sides, not on the front, just on the sides. <laughs> hey, before I got into my accent, I told you I was on a mission. I was, I was really, really like doing it. You were doing side crunches the entire time? Yeah, man. I just, <laughs> that, that's it. Just working on my sides. <laughs> Oh man, but now once I hit that once I hit that tree, I fell into a, just like fucking alcohol. Like fuck it, I need to numb all of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After uh, after everybody left, you know, I loved having my family here and all that. But after they left, I was like, I dial back the alcohol, dial back on the eating out, and just just get back to making my meals and just cleaning everything up for a little while. Hmm. Not that it wasn't fun because it was it was amazing. But like we said best meal the entire trip was when we cooked exactly look, it wasn't even anything extravagant the home, home girl was like you ate three plates already i was like shit i'm hungry it's food you know what i'm saying exactly exactly you know, we got we got food here don't let it go to waste we had steak and chicken mm-hmm. and i don't know why i made that little ass pot of fucking rice when there was a bunch of asians oh, at the table oh, 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 oh. do not lump me in <laughs> with that shit we know look, who made that. Look, all y'all looking like shit. <laughs> all y'all, yeah, all so, y'all made the rice. Oh, you know? y'all made a fucking little ass pot. Listen, and I know I love rice. I fuck rice up. Heartbeat, I you know what I'm saying? I saw that. I was like, you know what? I know you're trying to keep me on my low carbs, but you're not during family meal like that. Nah, man. Right. Uh, yes, indeed. Cheers. Shit is good. Man, this basil hating is actually really freaking good. It's from uh from the James from the Jim Beam distillery. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's real nice. Hmm. All right. So across the spider verse. So, like you said, you said you think you might it might be the best Spider Man movie you've seen. Yes. And okay, why? You gotta give a distinct why. I don't know if it was more of the ending for me or just the even the beginning because mm-hmm. um, it, it starts off with you know Gwen's side of st- her story yeah and just trying to play the drums are going with her thoughts which yeah. I thought was I thought was dope and everything yeah and um just all the different spider-mans like how can you have that many different spider-mans to be their own distinct version you know what I'm saying yeah and like even the, the the one from India, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, uh, the the the, the punk rocker or whatever he was, yeah, the French dude, yeah, yeah that's that, like, that shit, like Lenny Kravitz, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, that shit was dope too, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. he actually was funny, like he had a whole lot of comedy throughout the movie, mm-hmm. a bunch of one liners and shit, but um, I I hate to all put it on the ending because there's so many great parts in the movie, yeah, but how dark it got, I was like, ooh, okay, so so how it went from like kind of lighthearted and not lighthearted but kind of like jokey lightheartedness and then like as the movie went on the tone got more serious more serious when, yeah, when, yeah. Really, when you really kind of like understood the gravity of what was happening here yeah 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 i i, I could feel that i think what it might be one of my fa- I, as i say one of my favorite just because mm-hmm. again i gotta i gotta score on the bias because Sp- no. spider-man 2 with toby Maguire and doc ock Mm-hmm. I I still think it's the best Spider Man movie, mm-hmm. but like this one because because it's animated gets to do a lot. But yeah, I think it held it held the the perfect tone to capture a Spider Man comic book. Mm-hmm. But then like the emotion, like yeah, some emotion in this thing. Yeah, definitely. Like between um, father child relationships, um. Even when I mean, are we are we gonna talk about the movie or are we gonna skip around? Because we'll just we'll just we'll just skip around. Just I mean, even with, even I mean, go see it. First of all, everybody that's listening right now, if you haven't seen it, go see the goddamn movie for real. Because it is it's just good. I mean, you if you want to refresh your memory with the first one, it's not gonna hurt. But I don't even think you need to see the first one. Yeah, no, I don't think you need to. I think I think uh, seeing the first one is good because you you kind of understand Gwen and Miles' relationship a little more. Mm-hmm. 
but like you kind of see how like why it's integral for them to to feel the way they feel yeah but, yeah i don't think it's necess- too necessary as far as like understanding this movie look man the- <sighs> What was, your favorite, what was your favorite aspect? I was, was going to ask you your favorite scene. My favorite aspect? Yeah, what's your favorite aspect? I don't I don't want to sound like a typical black person, but I actually like the black mama on the motorcycle. Nah, I mean... Explain. Explain. Because, okay, this is what like I... Like that cartoon ass? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Like that bubble. Like, a, look, ass is ass. Just saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody knows who Jessica Rabbit is. Everybody knows who Jessica Rabbit is. Just saying. Hey. Look, see, you pause on that one too. You're right. You're right. <laughs> all right hold on. Okay, so, 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 all right. So, name, name me three, three cartoon women that if they were in real life, you were like, God damn. Just, definitely Jessica Rabbit. Mm-hmm. She's always been up there. Um, mm-hmm. Probably Princess Jasmine. Okay. Okay. Cartoon, cartoon, cartoon. Hmm. A third one. Oh, um, I would say Ariel, but no, she's got she's half thin. Can't have Hold too much. Fun. Can't have too much fun with her. Little Mermaid, redhead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but pronounce that again. Ariel. But say it again. Ariel. You know, you know that's the, that's how the Ariel. crab says it. The crab says Ariel. The crab's Jamaican. I know, so it it, so it works. I don't no, care. Uh, <laughs> Sanka, Sanka. I think you're not you're not thinking right there now, Sanka. <laughs> Oh man, Ariel, man, <laughs> Ariel. There you go. <laughs> so, so I, I probably agree with those. I think one, uh, one hidden gem that is probably not a lot of people think about. Uh-huh. She just, she's she just so white trash, and I kind of love it. Okay, is a uh, Luann from King of the Hill, the the, the niece. <laughs> So she remind me of she reminds me of uh, uh Kelly from Married with Children. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Luann. Oh shit. They teach us in high school that yeah that uh no that nobody's just black or white or brown or blue. <laughs> but the hair can be. Oh gosh. Uh, no. She did she have the raspy voice? No. I don't know. Oh yeah. she had the, uh, Brittany Murphy did her voice. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah. All right. So, so you said your favorite scene is just the mom on the motorcycle? Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, saw, motherfucker. No, no, no. Hey, she's, hey, she's fertile. I'm ready. <laughs> but nah, I like 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 the opening scene when they're fighting, and you know she's like like badass. You know, she's yeah. pregnant on a motorcycle, whooping ass. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. just like like it's nothing like like, like it's every day uh, every day gig, and I don't want to make this a black or white thing, but I'm gonna just say there's a whole lot of pregnant mom that I get the shit done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I thought that was dope. You know what I mean? I think my favorite scene is, hmm. I think my favorite scene is right near the end where, uh, spoiler alert, where Prowler, you know, when Miles shows up at the house Mm -hmm. and he's like, they're like, oh yeah, you took your braids out, whatever. And Prowler, he just, yeah, 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 you coming? Because he literally knew exactly what was happening. Yeah. And just kept his cool. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, like, nah, yeah, you, you ain't gotta sneak this shit past me. Yeah. Sure so you took dope. so you took your braids on purpose and he's like, uh yeah. He's like, all right. Yeah. So honestly, I honestly, I did not expect that. Yeah, he's like, I got he's like, I got a job. You coming? Come on, Miles, let's go. And I'm just like, oh shit. And then yeah. when, when that man. Mm-hmm. That might be one of the best cliffhanger endings I've ever seen. Yes. Yes, and I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I got goosebumps at the end where Gwen is actually rounding up everybody. Because mm-hmm. for some reason, in the very in the first one, I actually like Spider Man Noir. Like just his vibe, his character. Yeah. Like so, so when to see them all coming back, yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, the second one's gonna be dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, my one of my favorite Superman, I mean Superman, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. One, I think it's bad because like my favorite Spider Man might be Miguel O'Hara, like Spider Man 2099. So the fact that he's the villain, but he's not yeah. really the villain. He's a villain, but he's not the villain. See, and because I, I was trying to figure out why didn't they touch on his background? Because they gave you a glimpse of it in the beginning mm-hmm. when um his face transformed, but they didn't show it. They just showed the shadow. Yeah, and then the helicopter came through. But I mean, they they talk about his background when he's because when he's fighting Miles, they kind of delve into his background. Yeah, 
but they but they never actually go into him like you never really see him transform or anything like that you know what i'm saying yeah because yeah. he because when when miles is going up the the, the um, train and he's like what are those claws he's are you even the spider-man you know what i'm saying yeah and i was like i was like, wonder if anybody caught that you yeah. know what i mean and then uh i think that and then one of my second favorite ones is scarlet spider which is ben riley and he's the one in the red outfit that had the the, the blue hoodie on Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. One that's kind of, he's kind of like lackadaisical, like, hey, man, like, I don't really want to was, do shit. Was he the one talking about, um, I got, what do you say, a muscular defined um, yeah. arms yeah. and everything said <laughs> when he had him in headlock? <laughs> he's just full of himself. Yeah. Yeah, that's my second favorite uh, Spider-Man. So, like, mm. just, uh, just seeing that they're on the villain side of things. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. So, one of the, one of the main, I think, aspects of this movie or topics of this movie is the idea that like every spider-man has a a, a like moment in their life that happened regardless of which universe they're in mm-hmm. right and these are the things that shape like who they become or how they become why they become spider-man yeah every universe and i started thinking about that and i started thinking about like our life in general and are there any moments in your life that you if there was a multiverse chris out there do you have any moments in your life that you'd feel like are like those those moments that happen will happen regardless of what universe you're in? Hmm. Hmm. It's a big question. Well, because I mean, I like because I think it comes down to these are the things that shape who we are as people and shape what, kind of what defines us and our motivations going forward in life. Mm-hmm. You know? And hmm. uh, and like in in that in this movie, it was one of those things where it's like miles. He didn't really have that. He did. He was supposed to have that. Yeah. You know, so, but then they said, wasn't he supposed to be him? That was supposed to be Spider-Man in the first place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which was, which was totally like a, a um, a mind blowing moment for me. Yeah. You know, like they sent the, the spider to the wrong spot. Yeah. The you know spider, what I'm spider came to the wrong spot and then bit him. And that caused a chain reaction for Peter Parker dying. So like, yeah. yeah, he wasn't even supposed to be a Spider Man. Mm. So yeah, yeah. So it was, it was almost like it was almost like course correcting. You know, Spider Man has like the whole Uncle Ben thing. Yeah, and then in Into the Spider Verse, Miles gets bit, and then that ends up having his uncle dying. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah. Is there any moments in your life that you would consider a a, a, that- a pivotal moment like that, regardless of what universe you're in? It has to happen. It has to happen. Like I said, that's a deep question. It has to happen. Mm. I don't even know if I want to answer this question. My mind is going a lot of different ways right now, but none of them are good. You know what I'm saying? But they all changed. You probably better put it in the glass to say. I got to taste like this first. Okay. Um. Mm. Damn. Damn, I don't know how to answer that question. I'll put this in the glass. Yeah, I mean, just let it breathe a little bit, but you know, yeah. And out of all beers, like no disrespect towards Michelobin, seriously, should have got you like. Actually, I ain't gonna say what should have got. We all have different palates. <sighs> so yeah, while he's going to get a glass to pour his beer, I'm gonna entertain y'all with my voice and talk while I'm thinking. Cause I really want to answer this question because it's more like something that kind of changes you for the rest of your life and it's like if it didn't happen i wouldn't be what i am however i don't want to say what it was that happened you know what i'm saying so yeah it's crazy here he comes he's back <clears throat> so yeah about your question i was saying that if it's something that has to happen yeah um it's definitely something that definitely changed my life forever and I don't regret it. However, I don't want to say that it is either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, because I got a couple of things. But um, if I can, if I could, okay, on a broader term, I would just say going to Iraq. Okay. Going to war. I I felt like that had to happen. Why? What? Like, well, like what? What? What was it about going to war that shaped your outlook or your your motivations? It just um like. Some of the struggles what I go with today is looks good. Is a glass frozen? Mm-hmm. 
That'll help. I had to go grab a, a frozen one because I grabbed the regular. I was like, nah, I got to try to counteract this shit as much as possible. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, going to war and just seeing life taken from you that quickly in front of you, it taught me just to seize every opportunity. And sometimes that shit gets me in trouble. Actually, you know what? A lot of times that shit gets me in trouble. But at the same time, I'm like, look, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to watch it happen. I want to be it happen. You know what I'm saying? You wanna, yeah, you want to, uh, you want to, you want to not witness it, but you want to take part. Kinda. Yeah, like, like even going down there when we just got done vacation, I was just in a whole fucking four wheel accident, body all fucked up. Mm-hmm. And y'all was like, everybody was telling me sit down, don't jump, do that. That like, fuck y'all, I'm not gonna pass this up. You know what I'm saying? I'll deal. I'll, I'm the type that I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I'm gonna deal with the aftermath later. And that's just it. I, I understand. You know, you know what I'm saying? I know you. You missed a perfect opportunity to put in the slogan, but you didn't. I'll. Uh, I'll excuse. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you! I got dreams. <laughs> right there. Right there. <laughs> Pretty much, they fuck you. I got dreams, man. Like shit. But yeah, so I can say if I if there was ever a multiverse me. Yeah, war would have to be something that has to happen. Yeah, at some, uh, some, somehow, some way, you have to find yourself in the middle of war. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Because I can imagine, like, the idea that, like, if you're, if you're, and I get, I've never been to war, but I can imagine if you're in war and you're seeing how little life means in to, those, other, to other people. Yeah. yeah. Like, 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 like taking a life. It is. It, I don't know. Like I want to say, life isn't as, um, as what's the word? Cherished mm-hmm. in the middle of a war. You're just trying to take the other person's. And I guess when you when you see that, you kind of just be like, ah, oh, like this shit can, this shit can go at any point at the hand of somebody else who don't give a fuck. Yeah. And you know, you got to take every opportunity you can to to live it to its fullest. Yeah. Is it like a fear of missing out, or is it just a fear of like, you know, not not living life to its potential i think it's a fear of just not not even living life just not just not being you to your potential because it's gross yeah actually, this is, actually right now in the cold glass it just tastes like water mm. you're drinking it <laughs> point of the shot you wouldn't care no more but um <clears throat> what was i saying yeah. oh no um not even like living life just fully like i don't think people give themselves the ability to live to live to their fullest they're yeah. either too afraid or they're watching too much tv they seen this they heard this and i'm a, and I'm a stickler like this is why i hate reality tv where i'll say why do you want to watch somebody else live their life how about you go out there and live yours you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah you're watching them eat this and try this and buy this how about you go out there and you do the shit yeah you know what i mean this, and this is look, this is why i have no issues with tevin and his say yes to adventure uh, <laughs> i'm gonna be <laughs> shooting <laughs> I love the fact that that's his motto. I just also love the fact that in doing so, my man dropped his phone in the fucking <laughs> golf. Hell uh, yeah. Oh, shit. This is like, say yes to adventure. <laughs> oh, my phone. It fell off. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Oh. But, but yeah, that'll be it. Um, war, war, war has, if, if, if it ain't war, as much as I even hate to say this, a snake bite has to happen. <laughs> One of those two things, they have to happen. I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, yeah, that shit definitely changed my outlook on everything. I don't give a fuck. I'm doing what I want to do. Suck my ass. Fuck yeah. y'all got dreams. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's almost like, you know, and so for Spider-Man, you know, it's always someone has to die. Someone pivotal has to die. Mm-hmm. Always that Uncle Ben moment, but not necessarily always Uncle Ben. Yeah. He always has to meet his Mary Jane. It might not be Mary mm. Jane, but someone of that significance. So in your case, it's going to war mm. and also uh, a snake bite. That's interesting because the snake bite led to something else. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's actually yeah, very interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. What the fuck? Are we, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, because like so, like as as much as I as much as I love this movie. Yeah, and I love like the, the the art the art the artistic in direction behind it. The mm-hmm. story line, I think it just it opened up a lot of ideas in my head as far as like what drives us as people. Mm-hmm. You know, so like for instance, for me, you know, I think one of the things that has to happen in my life is 
is um, I got to have my heart broken hmm. at some point. Heartbroken, but like not because my heart got broken by someone, but it's like um, it was a moment. So for me, it was when, you know, I went to go ask the girl out and I got there and I felt like I got there 10 minutes too late. Mm-hmm. And it was that moment where I was like, like never again, like stop, stop second guessing yourself. Stop telling yourself that you're not worth it and just mm-hmm. fucking go. Mm-hmm. I got to have it. Cause that's literally that moment has driven me to never say like, well, you know, there's, it's always tomorrow. Like, no, there's isn't, you can, it, you, you could always get there 10 minutes too late. Like just mm-hmm. don't, let, don't give that, don't, don't give that opportunity to happen. Yeah. There's that. And then also, um, that's interesting. I also think um, maybe, and I hate to say it, when my, when my brother was in the car accident, he was in the coma for three weeks, because mm. that really changed my outlook on on wrestling. Like it literally, because it, it really before that I was hard nosed, focused on becoming a professional wrestler. Mm. And then when he got into the car accident, he was in the coma, and I used to spend like you know countless nights at the hospital with him, and I saw all these family members and friends showing up to show their support and you know wish him well and stuff like that and i just realized i ain't know anyone because Surat's never home he's asleep. Mm. he's asleep during the day he's working at night he's gone on the weekends mm. and like even after all that passed and i was still trying to make it as a wrestler i i, I can i can confidently say now i didn't push as hard as i should have mm. because in the back of my mind i was just like I'm, there's so much life I'm missing because I'm deadly focused on this one thing. Mm. And maybe that wasn't for me. I don't know. Mm. It's one of the things where it's, it, it, it kind of told me what was most important in my life. Yeah. As you can see, you know, with the trip recently, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like I, I've come to, I've come to the conclusion that family, my family is very, very fucking important to me. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> Like I said, the, 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 y'all y'all adopted me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, like, like I was telling my friend that um, like me and you've been friends for 15 years. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But um, I really felt like I got close to your parents maybe about two to three years ago. Yeah. You know we've been friends forever, but I felt like I got close with them basically recently. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which also was sparked the events that you know took place after, because your dad pulled me to the side and gave me like one of those father son speeches, and I listened to it. Like, yeah, hmm, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Is it, and like, like I said, like I felt like after the trip, it was almost. It, it, I felt like there was a switch in in your relationship with my parents. Oh, definitely. Where it was kind of like you know these are two grown folks that I. I treat like family and I respect the hell out of mm-hmm. who that's mom and dad. That's yeah. Like, yeah, there's no, there's no if, ands, or buts. Yeah. Like, like, I told you, mom be the first one to take a shot at me in the morning. She's like, no, mm-hmm. it's too early. Come on. <laughs> but when you laughed, she was like, oh, I miss Chris. I need to take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Right, Definitely. Well, okay. okay. So, uh, what were you expecting with, with across the spider verse because eh, this had a lot to live up to oh yeah like uh, into the spider verse is one of the best fucking animated movies ever in my opinion yeah yes yeah, it, it was good up it's up there you know what i'm saying yeah. i didn't really know what to expect I, I, okay you know what i'm lying because after watching the trailer and you knowing the first story i thought this was gonna be more about almost like a love story between him and gwen mm-hmm. Like her coming back to get him, and you know, going into the into the multiverse or whatever, and all different Spider Mans and everything, and I like I knew they had to fight their way out of it because from the trailer, yep. but I thought it was end with them two like fighting for each other, so to speak, but in what the love story format. Yeah, yeah, almost like almost like a Romeo and Juliet ish kind, of, something like that. You know what I'm saying? But this was nah. They 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 fought, but it was a different type of fight. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, the thing is, is like. When I was listening to the story as it was playing out and it went from, you know, hey, I want to be included. I want to be I want to be a Spider-Man. I want to be included in this group of spider people like, you know, with this is a fraternity that we all belong to from all the different universes. I want to belong to it. Mm-hmm. To, I I need to be me. Mm. I need to stand on my I need to stand. I need to stand for what I, I believe in. You know, despite what everyone else is telling me, 
Yeah. I thought that was dope because it was a very, like, I didn't expect it to be as tragic and as, like, heartfelt as it became. Yeah. The part that got me, where, where I can say it kind of hit me in my chest, <clears throat> was when he's on the train again. Mm. And you got Peter and Gwen, and they're like, okay, that's enough. Leave him alone. We talked about this. You're going too far. And he's like, y'all talked about this. And I was like, holy shit, talk about the betrayal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that that part right there hit me. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're going through all this shit and your friends know you're about to go through it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was crazy. The crazy thing to me is like everybody knew that like Miles shouldn't have been there. It was, it was a specific thing that either he was, it was about to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, because uh, the, the police chief, no matter what, no matter what universe they were in, police chief had to die, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they knew that like his dad was about to be police chief or whatever. Like, I forget what I forget what exactly that signified. You know, something about a villain or something, but like something happened where like I, I forget what it was. I'm trying to think because they they talk about it because in in India. He ends up saving the police chief. Yeah. And that's why they had to go there and kind of like, they kind of change it all up before everything went to chaos or whatever. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think, what was it? Yeah. I forget what the reasoning why the police chief had to die everywhere. Yeah. I don't remember. I really don't. Yeah. But yeah, they talked about that. <clears throat> and like, just the fact that like everybody knew like, like Miles is, di- Miles, everybody knew Miles is different than all of us. Mm-hmm. He ain't supposed to be. He's not. He's not like us. Mm-hmm. So, like the fact you, when you think you belong and you realize you're alone. Mm. Oh, man, 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 Ooh. man. Yeah, I think that's why that train scene was so pivotal to me. Like, the, like I don't, every scene in the movie, I think the train is probably one that stays on to me the most. Like I said, besides the ending. Yeah, because then when everything's coming out and they're chasing them, and even he's like, what do you say? He said, I can't be that smart, but I did lower all the Spider-Man away. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, okay, I got you. <laughs> but like, also, what was it? The fucking, um, like, Miguel, like, Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, like, his story mm-hmm. is fucking crazy. Because, well, he's just, he's trying to save his daughter. Yeah. And, like, that put him on the path to do all the shit where he's just, he's just trying to save his daughter. And now, like, he's the one that has got to, he can see everything that's about to happen. He's got to trying to hold everything together like you can't you can't fault him no before i get into that so do you actually know his backstory like i know you're a spider-man fan or just like from the movie so oh man i hate to say this because I, I just said earlier he's like my favorite spider-man yeah but like i'm not too versed on his his backstory gotcha okay damn it. and that's right you sound like a fucking you sound like a poser god damn it i, look, look, I, I didn't want to ask him what i did because i want to ask more questions but you know i was like because uh, like i'm i'm more versed on peter parker's I've, I've followed him so much more mm-hmm. but i just love Spider-Man 2009. He was more. He felt more like more of a badass, and you know the whole mm-hmm. vampire thing behind him and shit like that. Yeah. So like he's just. I don't. Know, he had. He was just seemed way more complex than every other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I like Spider-Man in general because he's a, he's a he's he's a superhero who's not only dealing with superhero problems but mm-hmm. like kid problems. Yeah. I gotta have this shot just because I would just I, I just shit the bed on 2099. <laughs> drink up. It's our day to drink. I got work to do after, man. I'm going to bed. I'm going to fry some chicken and going to sleep. Sounds like that's the blackest statement I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to watch Martin too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bed tonight just watch Soul Plane. Hell yeah. With a big, big ass plate of fried chicken and some hot sauce. All right. Oh, another one? Let's do it. I thought you poured one. You poured I did. one? Cheers. All day, baby. All the time. So what did you think of Gwen's story? I liked it when it finally came back, back around full force. Mm-hmm. Because as a father, I don't think my job could ever be that much more important. 
Yeah. Because when he ends up catching her, and then she takes off her mask, and he's like, you got the right to remain silent. I'm like, come on, dude, really? Yeah. Mm. Run away, meet me at home, let's talk about this later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was so stuck on. I got it, yeah. I'm like, I got yeah. this, this person, this spider woman is, like, evil. Like, she's the one that's yeah. you know, causing all the trouble and shit like that. I don't mm. know. It's, it's hard, man, because that's kind of like... It's kind of like finding out you like it's like Dexter finding out your kid's the fucking serial killer. Mm. It's like, what do you do? Yeah, you know, because because you would think in his mind he'd be like Spider Man or Spider Woman's not the, the, the he's not they're not the bad guy. Mm-hmm. But like, if as a cop, it's hard not it's hard to it's hard to argue against the, if they see that person as a bad guy because they're a vigilante going out there and just taking you know crime into their own hands yeah but like uh-huh. i said if, if, if it's a child and i mean okay let me ask if it was ryu so super dog you know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm just saying shit because I know, I know you let a dog fucking more than fucking breathing air you know what i'm saying and yeah, you, yeah, and I, you got, and I got this new ring with his you got, look you got a fucking ring you got a tattoo you probably got look shit you probably you got you got fucking murals all over your house. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen. So look, yeah, no, oh, yeah. So look, I, I, okay, okay. so if, if I just thought, turned out to be the villain in the story, not even the villain, but because obviously Spider Man or Spider Woman, whatever, is not the villain. They're just helping, and then you come to realize, hey, wait a minute, this is my dog. But it, okay, but but at first, at first, I view him as a villain. Hmm. I have to, I view him as a villain. And it wasn't until later when like, you know, his, his senses came back to him. He's like, like, nah, like I pretty much, I wouldn't raise a daughter that would be like that. So he gave up his job. So, okay, if, but- uh, so if it was Ryu, no, I don't know. You would do shit. My grill is kind of warm. <laughs> Your grill <laughs> So, some of that Korean barbecue. <laughs> That's fucking terrible. <laughs> oh shit! That's that corgi Rian barbecue. <laughs> Say it again, cor- cor- corgi Rian. Corgi Rian. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, he's um, small. So he's small, so it's not all you can eat. Yeah, if it's a la, a la carte, you gotta order but, it piece by piece. But he gonna fry them chicken feet. That's for damn sure. <laughs> they look like chicken legs or chicken wings, rather. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I guess if you if you truly believe in your child and the mm-hmm. way you raised your child, it's hard to put your duty. In front of your, like, your 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 your, your parent parental peace of mind. I mean, I get that, but this this goes back to what I've always said before, and when it comes to just society in general, yeah. People always look at the action of somebody or what's going on, but nobody ever takes the time to want to understand why. Understanding is never there till later. I don't know if that's true because Jeffrey Dahmer's dad kind of knew the motherfucker was not all there, and he didn't. And that motherfucker ended up cooking up Filipino kids. So I mean, okay, uh, okay, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, do you does does the fact that the person on the opposite side of that line, mm-hmm. being your child or being your family member, member, does that have a does that in fact play a a part in how you react to a situation? Definitely, because like I said, if I, put, if I put myself in that position, you know, there's very, there's very few people I love like to death in this world. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if one of those people are in that position, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna do my job because if, I, if I'm trying to catch you, and then I see it's you, okay, we gotta talk. You know what I'm saying? We gotta talk mm-hmm. off the record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Meet me over here and educate me what the fuck is going on because I know the person you showed me who you are. So what the fuck are you doing and why? Okay, so okay, so in in, in into the Spider Verse, we had that moment. Mm-hmm. We had that moment where Prowler catches Miles, mm-hmm. pulls the mask off him, realizes it's Miles. Mm-hmm. He's like, 
Yeah. No, no, no. So then he puts the mask back on Miles, is about to let him go, and Kingpin shoots mm-hmm. him. Right? Yeah. So like, it's one of those things where maybe is that like sometimes you get that universe course correcting. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 weird. Like I I can confidently say, like, I'd probably be like, hey man, fucking put your shoes on, put this helmet on, and like get out of here. We we're gonna talk about this shit. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, when I go talk to you, just know I'm a, I got handcuffs about right behind me. Like you better have a really good explanation. Like you, they, they better be holding your mama hostage or some shit. That's that's all it is, man. I mean, I can remember being a kid and making decisions based off of what I thought was right. And one thing I had to give my mom credit for is whenever I did it, she always let me explain why I did it. And once I explained why, she understood it. And I think that's why I'm so big on that now. Just understand what the fuck is going on. Like don't they like, don't look at my actions or the after that, whatever. Understand why I did it. It's gonna make a whole lot more sense. Granted, it might not be right. If you understand it, eh, it's easy to work with. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's weird because I have that same outlook now, but I didn't get that kind of grace when I was younger. My my ass, my my mom was like, let me whoop your ass now, and then I then I will talk about not even talk about this. Whoop your ass now and just don't do it again later. Oh, bees was a must. That was an everyday thing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. but when I got old enough to actually talk, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was like, wait, before you do what you go do, hit me up for a minute. I'm probably, you, know, you 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 first of all, you you sound real, you sound real middle class right now. <laughs> you can you can you can take that term how you want. I didn't know what that means. We I'm both speak from Massachusetts, right? I'm just saying, you know, you know, we, we know in the hood with us colored parents didn't really give us that kind of grace. Nah. Hey, hey, you, you, know, ain't gonna, you ain't gonna no, tell me. Look, look, when your hands you did when your hands go up and you and you keep distance between you and that belt. Okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. That belt is about a good uh, four or five feet. Okay. My dad would be like, I'm like, my dad, let me explain. Oh yeah, you explain how explain to people how you got these whipping marks. <laughs> Oh man! I remember my mom once. She was like, just fucking. Uh, she, I, I got whooped for fucking uh, pouring too much soda into a cup. Mm-hmm. It was a cup like this. I poured some soda. Remember nine ninety nine cents for a goddamn two liter. I poured the soda up to here. I drank about that much, then poured the rest out. Mm. And before I could finish pouring it out, my ass is getting whooped. Goddamn. Mm-hmm. Well, look at you now. Now you know, like, don't be wasteful. You know what I'm saying? Whether it costs 99 cents yeah, or 99 dollars, somebody worked hard for that. Yeah. Well, some the rest of this is about to get wasted soon because this is gross. Well, you brought that. I know. I'm trying to be different for the, for this for this episode. <laughs> this is multiverse, or this is Earth, you know, 1965 or some shit. Oh hell no! You'd still be on the boat somewhere. No, no, I don't know what I'm saying. Like in 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 this version <laughs> of the universe, I'm like six two. You just don't realize it. I just got bigger. I got bigger, uh, bigger things behind me, so it makes me look small. But I'm actually six two right now. I don't realize it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, if you oh, if you was if you have came across multiverse, Chris, like. <laughs> what what's something what's something about that motherfucker that would be different than you now? Uh, we wearing, he be rocking Skechers. No Ske- fuck no fuck no fuck no 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 no. Skinny jeans? No no hell no hell no. Yeah. I can't wear skinny jeans because my knots don't fit. You not know you. Saying? That's not you. It's multiverse, Chris. Yeah, that no. Chris grew up. That Chris grew up in Ludlow. He didn't grow up in Indian Orchard, so <laughs> so he grew, he can wear Skechers. Mm 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 mm. Yep. Hell no. Hell no. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, I mean, you know what? Up. Yeah. I just hope he's wearing boots. And then you gotta be Tim. Nah, just wear nah, boots. Nah, nah, he ain't gonna have no boots on, bro. He's gonna have some some slides. The, the thong slides and some skinny jeans. Oh fuck no. No, fuck no. Yeah. Oh shit. No, hell no. But y'all, oh. but y'all gonna have the same toes. So it's gonna look <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Gonna look like Goliath from Gargoyles. <laughs> uh, you asshole. You know I keep my feet hidden on purpose. You know what I'm saying? I know. They, the motherfuckers they, just rancid. They've they, they been some places. Uh, 
Well, you just got done getting like fucking bronze molds done. Look, look we was out there, we was out there on, on the water. I'm pretty sure everyone was like from head to kneecaps. Yeah, yo, he's kind of cool, a little sexy. You got to the feeling, like, what the fuck is going on there? Hey, don't you worry about that, right? <laughs> don't you worry about those. Pick your head back up. Show what you chose, man. It ain't Halloween. <laughs> Oh God, y'all some assholes too. Because every time we get together, y'all be trying to go get fucking pedicures and shit. No, we didn't do it this time. We should have. No, 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 you needed it. No, I, I just got them done. Please, man. <laughs> this shit looked like it was dipped in gold. <laughs> exactly. Why are your toenails that color? <laughs> Oh God! Uh, oh. Anyways, uh, yeah. So yeah, if multiverse Chris, if he ran up on you, what's one thing that's gonna be significant about him that is different about you? That like you could be like, okay, that's not that's not the Chris I know. Personality and appearance, one of each. Interesting. I'm cracking this motherfucker. His open. eyebrows will be done. His eyebrows. Will be done or won't, won't be done. done. <laughs> oh, you let them caterpillars grow? Shit. I take care of some bitches. You know what I'm saying? You get your you get your eyebrows done? I don't get them done, but I've been doing it for years because I cut off half my fucking eyebrow in the seventh grade when I was cutting my hair. And that's why they look the way they look now, because it's just the way they are. But you go over that crisscross. With the, with the, with the, with the slits. Yeah. Nah shit. Nah. That's the fake gangsters. All right, so personality wise, that's appearance. Your eyebrows, you'd have thick, some thick ass fucking Ben Stein eyebrows. But what about pretty you? much? What about your personality? What would be something different about a multiverse Chris's personality? That's actually interesting to say because I can change personalities really, really quickly. Yeah, I know, but I but I gotta know that that's not the Chris I know. He won't drink Jack fucking Daniels. That's not personality. I feel like that's a. I feel like it's more of a, a an appearance trait. But what you see him at the bottom, hey, let me get that sex on the beach. Hey, what the fuck? Okay, no, yeah, you are definitely that, that way. No, that's, that's an appearance one. Okay, that's, that's. I think that's more appearance than the the eyebrow, because that's like you know that's like him walking around with a fucking mixed drink. Everybody just like this. No, nah, fuck no. Um, huh. personality wise, uh. <sighs> he won't be quick to help. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Just very kind of kind of a little more selfish. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What about you? What was your multiverse? High heels, fishnets. <laughs> Rice cakes. <laughs> Look at fucking chip. I'm gonna me spit this shit out. <laughs> like a chipmunk right now. <laughs> you almost made me spit that shit out. You motherfucker, how you gonna play upon my fucking insecurities like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh man. No, I think um I think if uh, appearance wise um I probably have a shaved head. Okay. Right? If, you, if all of a sudden you saw me and be like, yo, like, you guys kind of, like, you got a bald head. That's, that's the, of all the haircuts Stroud would have. Yeah, that's definitely not one of them. It's not it. Ever. Yeah. Personally, personality wise, I might be, I might be angry. Like, mm. this, I got a short fuse. Mm. Like, yeah, that see, definitely, that, that, I mean, because other than, other than driving, that's the only time I really have a. You need to get a short fuse and drive. You used to be talking shit, in my opinion. Yeah, but, it should be the funny day, so. but the other day I was driving and I said some shit and Michaela was like, um, oh, you know, she goes, boo, what's with you and turn signals? It's because these motherfuckers don't know how to use turn signals. Yeah. Like you put turn signals so I know which way you're going so that way I can just keep going or whatever or wait for you. Mm-hmm. Now I have to wait for that motherfucker to turn. He didn't use his turn signal and now it just takes longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I'd, yeah, I'd, have a, I'd have a short fuse about, about shit. If you ever mm-hmm. saw that, you'd be like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that ain't so up. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, and I'd be eating dog, not loving him. <laughs> Look, Ryu just don't know. He gonna get chopped up eventually. Dude, I said that and Ryu just looked over like <laughs> is, this, is this multiverse dad? What's going on? 
<laughs> oh man. Oh gosh. All right. So, where does name your top three Spider-Man movie right now? Top three? Like this, Amazing Spider-Man two. That was my number Hold one. Up. Amazing Spider-Man two. Yes, when Gwen when Gwen dies. With Jamie Fox. Yeah. Come on now, really? You can't. You can't. Okay, listen. The Gwen moment, heartfelt. Heartfelt. Okay. The movie itself. And I'm talking about the movie, not the moment. But the moment made the movie, in my opinion. No, no, the, the move. The moment was great despite the movie. Because I, the thing is, I love Spider Man, but like, it was just it was that movie was more about world building than it was telling a Spider-Man story. And, and to me, the Gwen Stacy moment in that movie was like, okay, like, let's give them this because we know all this other stuff doesn't really have much significance. Plus fucking Jamie Foxx, fucking Electro. Yeah. He looked like the dude from Hellboy. Would that be in the water? (laughs) Ah, Okay, I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna still stand my stand my ground on this one yeah, it's, it's, because it's your list, it's your list. not because you never you you never expect them to die. You know what I'm saying? Same same with Iron Man. I'm switching gears for, for for a minute. Who expected Iron Man to die in the um, Avengers? Me. Someone had to go, and that's the oldest one. <laughs> really? Really? Nobody saw nobody no, saw no. that shit coming. You know no, what I'm okay. saying? I didn't okay, I didn't see Iron Man dying, but I expected I actually expected way more deaths. So the fact really? that only Iron Man died, I was just like But he wouldn't look at G though, you know what I'm saying? All right, no, my my bad. Scarlet what, what's her name? Scarlet oh, yeah, I, 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 that no, that was that her death was more significant than Iron Man's in my opinion. Yeah. Only because of her relationship with her and um Okay. Yeah. Like you, think, you could tell at that moment that that was like a really brother sister relationship. Yeah, I think I think with I think with her it was yeah hers was definitely more tragic. I think Iron Man's was kind of like uh, it had to happen. Yeah, no. So that's what I'm saying. Back to Spider Man when Gwen died, like Spider Man's doing this thing trying to save save everybody, do what he can do, and even though he caught her, he was a second too late. Mm-hmm. A second too late. Yeah. That second makes a fucking difference, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, like you just didn't expect it, you know that. that. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm gonna my that beautiful white skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I gotta stop drinking. I can feel this shit already. Yeah, oh man, this is what happens when. Okay, yeah, you're gonna get a better gauge of like, all right, this is when this is when. The, the screws are turning loose. Yeah, for real. It looks for real. Um, all man. right. So, all right. So this. Okay. So this is. Oh. We've we've touched on across the Spider Verse. Hold on, hold on, we gotta finish the top, top three because you didn't say yours. Oh, so I, I you, said that so you, one. You said this one, Amazing Spider Man Two. Uh huh. Um, the one that we just watched across Spider Verse. And um, I kind of want to say the um the last one, um, No Way Home. That okay. that was dope. Okay, I think for me, Spider Man Two, Tobey Maguire, Across mm-hmm. the Spider Verse, and hmm, probably No Way Home. Probably okay. No Way Home because that to me, uh, does it No Way? Is it No Way Home or is it the OG fucking Tobey Maguire? Hmm. It's weird because it might be it might be the OG Toby. No, it's no way home. It's no way home. OG okay. Toby Maguire has my it has my my record for seeing the movie in the theaters. Mm-hmm. I saw that fourteen times in the theater. Are you serious? Yeah. Holy shit! All right, so okay, so what, what's your thoughts on Spider Man Three, the one with Venom and Sandman? It gets a lot of hate. I didn't. I didn't hate it. Um. This is gonna suck. It just wasn't rememberable. Like I remember it, but um, Green Goblin was who? Um, what's his name? Fucking okay, um, uh, what's his dude? James Franco. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And um, 
Like it wasn't bad, but it didn't it didn't stand out. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I actually I really like Spider Man Three. Mm-hmm. I just wish they didn't shoehorn Venom in there as the villain. I think they should have saved him for Spider Man Four. To me, the ending of Spider Man Three should have been. Uh, Green Goblin and Spider Man working together to take down uh, fucking um, Sandman, mm-hmm. and then Green Goblin, you know, obviously dies. Mm-hmm. And after all that happens, is when Spider Man's like, I gotta like, he's gotta get rid of that black suit. Mm. Goes onto the fucking the bell tower and gets rid of the black suit. Then it drops down onto fucking Eddie Brock, mm. and, when, and that's when he t- when he turns into Venom and then jumps at the screen. Gotcha. That should have been the last scene in the fucking movie. Hmm. That, okay, that would be dope. Yeah. That, 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 that's that's my thought. Oh, there we go. The fuck was that? Iris protection, bro. I'm actually anticipating the next venom. They, they better do it good. Did you see the trailer for Craven the Hunter? No, I did not. Ooh, they just put the they just put the new trailer out for Craven the Hunter. I'm not sure about it yet. Not sure about it yet. It feels more, it feel yeah you know who Craven is right I don't he's the the villain that's like he's dressed like he's from like South Africa he's got like the like the the, the teeth the, the necklace with the teeth and the fur around his neck and he's like trying to hunt Spider Man no I never heard of him you never heard of Craven the Hunter I have not no God damn he's from Africa bro you supposed to know about him I'm from Europe. Yeah. My bad, my bad. You're not, yeah, I forgot. You're not, you from the West Indies, the Caribbean. You're not, I don't, what, I don't know where the fuck I'm from. Honestly, shit. From Street from Massachusetts. I know, my, I know my bloodline goes back to the Caribbean. Yeah. Even though I hate fucking Rome. Actually, I don't hate it. That shit makes me angry. I, see, I still don't, I, just, I still don't believe that. I don't, know, I don't believe that. I mean, I could have been my surroundings too, but I know I drank Rome and I was ready to fuck up everything. It's weird because, like, you know, you hear the different alcohols make a person feel a certain way. Like, mm. I don't like tequila, but everybody I know that drinks tequila says that makes them angry. Yeah, it can do. It. I think it lowers your sense of your sense of sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> you think so? Or do you think people just take that as like, oh, yeah, this is supposed to make me angry. So then they start acting up. No, um, because even when, when I drink it, when I've had to go do some crazy shit, I've always mixed it with whiskey. And at that moment, that's the thing. you know, you're about to go do some crazy shit. Dude. Let me get some tequila because then, it, it, because everything just doesn't matter at that moment. Yeah, but th- you didn't drink tequila and then go do some crazy shit. You had to go do some crazy shit. So you drank tequila. Mm, true, true, Difference. true. But that's because I know what it can do. No, no, no. That's because you're doing it on yourself. And now you blaming it on the tequila. Not because my, my sense of my, like I said, my sense of sense isn't there. I, first of all, I didn't understand the word you just said. <laughs> My sense of sense. Yes. It's like, like my sense of sense, like being common or cautious or whatever, it's out the fucking window. I feel this. I'm going to do this. And I don't care. Yeah. So you drink the tequila so you can be like, so you can have a reason. Like, yeah, I blame it on the tequila. Blame it on the a- 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 alcohol. I don't blame it on alcohol. Except for throwing up. <laughs> I had to say, I, I had to say before you did, because I knew he was going to try to squeeze it in somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's bring this talk about this for a second. Okay, so for those who don't know, yeah, we just celebrated my 40th birthday, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, when you when you listen to this. And uh we did a lot of drinking. Not just me, Chris, my brothers, my parents, and all day every day. There was one person who popped. Get the by fuck out of here. I popped, I mean they they let it all come back up. And not only did they let it all come back up, it was caused by their favorite drink. And I, when I tell you that this moment made me very happy, it made all you fucking happy. Very fucking happy. This is just all. This is this is came number one. Number two was Tevin losing his phone. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, it's Chris popped and threw up. Yeah. Should have drank the dead wine. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. See, see, like I said, blaming it on the alcohol. Yeah. I should have drank the wine. Yeah. But I didn't want to let it go to waste. <laughs> and mom was like, let's do a shot. I was like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> no, I, I, I could feel it. Same way we went to dinner that night. And we got to do the shot to Hennessy. I was like, oh, fuck me. Yeah. I could feel it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was trying. I was trying. Yeah. All my years, you know me. You never see me throw up, have you? 
That was the first fucking time. Yep. First time. Terrible. And it was, it was, it was nice. It, it was, was bad. It was bad. I fucked, whole, I, I fucked the whole bathroom up. I had to go here and clean the whole damn shit. Uh, listen, all I know is after that, we started having that leak in that bathroom. So <laughs> that have been Chris. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so all right, so so this is that's that's all about across the Spider Verse. Amazing mm-hmm. movie. Now, what do you expect from the the second half of this? Because this movie ended on a cliffhanger. It did. What do you expect to happen the next half? Because now we're in some unforeseen territories. Well, they got to get him out of the universe he's in, back to his own before he glitches too much. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And not only did Gwen assemble the team. She's got what? Eight people, maybe? Yep. They still got to fight against like 50,000. 50,000 Spider Man. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know. I, I think. What do I expect? I expect some of these Spider Spider Men to die. I expect. I kind of think Peter Parker, dad Peter Parker, is going to die. You think so? He's just, he got a baby girl. He can't die. So? That don't mean shit in cartoon world. Yeah. Fucking Mufasa died. He had a whole pride. I mean, whatever. Is that is that <laughs> pack? Pride was the rock. He had a whole pack. <laughs> he had a rock too. And he was good by his brother. Shit. I know. Oh man. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't. I really don't know what to expect because I feel like um. What's his, what's his name, Miguel? Yeah, Miguel I feel, like, I, I feel like he's gonna be something, something to deal with. I feel like he's. I feel like he might have a come to Jesus moment. Hmm. I feel like Peter Parker might die, and then he has a come to Jesus moment. Really? Yeah. Mm. So, okay, so this is what I'm basing it on. Because of the daughter. Okay, keep going. This is what I'm basing it. On. Yeah, exactly. But so, the one thing I noticed is a lot of these movies. They pull things from different storylines, mm-hmm. like you know, all these comic movies. They they kind of adapt parts of different storylines to make their movie or whatever. And right now, it's reminding me of the actual Civil War storyline, not the one in the movie, but the actual Civil War storyline. Because okay. in, in in the actual Civil War storyline, you know how like in the movie Scarlet, uh, what's the name? Not Scarlet Witch, fucking Black Widow, mm-hmm. is the one that lets fucking um. She kind of turns sides and lets Captain America escape. Yeah. So in the comic books, it's actually um, Tony gets Spider Man to tell the world who he is. So he tells that world that he's Peter Parker because at the mm-hmm. time he's like a he's a um, substitute teacher or he's a teacher at a school. Okay. He tells the world who he is, and then uh, after all that happens, and then he starts seeing everything going on. He's the one that actually switched sides and goes with. Captain America, and he mm. switches to the black suit. Really? Yeah. Mm. So, I think, and then at the end of that one, everybody's fighting, it's all going down, and then what happens is Captain America actually stops everything, he gives up. Because he's like, there's too many people dying for this. Mm. Because we don't agree, and there's all these like superheroes dying and all that shit, like, we, can, we gotta stop. But he gives up. Mm. So I think, I think at the end, like I think Peter Parker dies, and then that causes Spider Man two thousand nine to be like, hey, we, we, this this is wrong. Like we can't be fucking like father just died, mm. and he's got to stop it all. Interesting. That's what I think is gonna happen. I don't know. I still I still feel like there's a love story in there somewhere between Gwen and Miles. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, 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 what if what if Gwen and Miles had a kid and they named their kid Guile, like Street Fighter? <laughs> that if somebody would write a movie about that too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Wait, so well, yeah, what's, what? Well, I'm, I'm definitely waiting for it though. Oh, it's it's what next year? Cause I felt like when when um Miles as Prowler saw himself. I feel like it was that moment in um, uh, was it Black Panther, a Killmonger? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just like the, the like the way he looked at and everything, like yeah. just the whole look and everything. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see how they approach the whole Miles as Prowler and Miles as Spider Man. 
Yeah, because if they're gonna fight in that universe, they gotta they gotta find the Spider Man from that universe. Yeah, and then also, yeah, because I th- well I think, well no I don't know, yeah do, yeah do, does that spot does that universe have a Spider Man? Because he went back to the universe that he was supposed that that the, the Spider was supposed to go to, to but that Spider never bit a Spider Man in that universe. Mm. They don't have a Spider Man. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So I, that's why I think I think when it comes down to, it, I think it's gonna be fucking uh, Miles Prowler versus Miles Spider Man, and then mm. Spider Man two thousand ninety nine against Peter Parker, Father Spider Man. Mm. I think that's what I think. Those are gonna be the two ones that butt heads. I think Gwen helps take care of like everyone else. Mm-hmm. But I think those are the two main like two main battles. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm waiting for it. Oh. I'm waiting for it. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, definitely. So uh, it's a good I, time I, to be a superhero fan. Man, I had a superhero fan sit beside me. I hope the cuss his ass out. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. Watch <laughs> the movie. You know what I'm saying? I, I hate I hate when people like that's, that's one of the things I don't like about opening nights, mm-hmm. opening weekends. But at the same time, like watching a movie that everyone in the theater loves and they're like they're jumping for joy at certain parts they're yelling at like when that when that happens that makes me fucking happy as shit hmm. you get those know-it-alls around you yeah yeah really the dog don't like you bro i don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah, if, you ever, dude, if you ever came home one day i was like ah oh, juice mm. i'm like oh that's multiverse chris <laughs> <laughs> Are Look, you kissing your dog on the lips, that ain't happening. Nah, fuck no. <laughs> like, no like, you talking about me? You talking about me? <laughs> she got that look like. <laughs> if you can see her, she give me the stink out like a motherfucker right now. Yeah. Uh, I got you, relax. Yeah. All right, man. As always, that's this latest episode of. Hold on. Wait, do, you, do you got a quote or something to take away from this movie? I, I don't. I could probably find one real quick, but shit, I'm just asking if you do. Do you have a quote? Or something you can take away from it? Be what you believe in, despite what the world is telling you to be. Yeah, your dog got a shit or something. She's like, mother... She's like, dad... I got the runs, you know, it's free. You look at you, dad, it's Tuesday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got shit to do. We'll go find some tacos. Back up. Get away from me. Almost done, Juice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, to me, it's, you know, be what you believe in, despite what the world is telling you to be. Okay. Because he had everyone plus, you know, statistics saying. He's supposed to be there. I don't do this. You're not supposed to even. You're not even supposed to be one of us. Yeah. But he knew in his heart who he had to be and what he's about, and he and Miles chased it. And mm. that's that's. I think sometimes people can get detracted about chasing their dreams or doing what feels right to them because either the world's telling them they shouldn't do it, the world's mm. telling them it's too hard, or the world's telling them it's going to take a long time. But mm. if you don't, if you don't let those things get to you. And you believe this is what you're gonna just you're meant to do, then go do it. Yeah, true. I think for a lot of people, I think what holds them up is they're like, I'm meant to do this, but they think because they're meant to do it, it's supposed to come like that. Mm. They're not supposed to have any obstacles in the way. Mm. That's cool shit. Well, it is because like you know, you ever seen some people who are like, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm supposed I, I I play ball. I'm supposed mm. to be a ball player, so they think they're on a fucking trajectory to make it to the NBA until mm-hmm. they come up against another six foot eight motherfucker who was meant to play basketball too. True. It's like, maybe you're not meant to be playing basketball. Maybe you're meant to be a coach. Maybe you're just meant to be in the world of basketball. Who knows? Mm-hmm. The yeah. fact of is it's going to be hard. You know, just because you're meant to do it doesn't mean it's supposed to come easy. That's what, what I hear. I heard a saying years ago. Say, if it's easy, it ain't worth it. Or something like that. I don't know. I always, I always believed if if your dreams, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're dreaming, if if it don't scare you, if you dream, interesting. Yeah. Okay. How about you? What, what, what's your uh, 
Um, if I could think of a quote for the movie or something to take from it, yeah, I guess do what's right no matter how hard it is. And I take that from the part where he went and saved the captain and the daughter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though they, even though everybody else around him knew what his purpose was, yeah, he was like, no, I can save them. I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. So in in the realm of all the Spider Men. Miles is kind of like a variant. He was the one who wasn't supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Right? So how about you in, in, the, in the realm of all the Chris Browns, knowing where you came from and everything, mm-hmm. would you consider yourself the stereotypical what Chris Brown would should be? Would you consider yourself a variant and not like there's something different about you? Oh, I'm despite, definitely a variant. Despite how you grew up. I'm definitely a variant. I am everything nobody expects <laughs> i can see that yeah just yeah. i mean i don't know i just i don't know like i i don't ever want to be put into a box yeah so you know i try to be cultured do everything eat everything try everything you know whatever yeah and that's why i was saying when we, when we were discussing earlier i can i can change modes too quickly yeah but only because of life experiences you know so like if i know my audience then i know that's say who I have to be, which is why some people be like, hey, you're being fake. I'm not being fake. I'm being me, just a different version of me. Yeah. Me's never going to change. Yeah. But I might change the outside appearance to fit in. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know, you, know you know what's right in the moment. Yeah. Everybody acts like because you, just because you put on proper clothes and talk differently means you're different. It doesn't mean you're different. It just means you understand like, hey, this is a proper moment. I got to act proper. That's yeah. It. Some I people mean, act like, some people act like just because just because you're this way, everybody has to accept you. Mm-hmm. And like, no, I don't have to accept shit. Yeah. You know, anytime people told me, like, look at my tattoos and everything, like, like if I had known you, I think this, this, and this. But after I heard the way you talk and everything else, like, like your look don't match your character. I mean, oh, shit, it's just my look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just it is what it is. But yeah. You know, I would love to say that I'm kind of a one of one variant. Like, you know, I'm just I'm I'm different than what I was meant to be, I guess. Okay. But but in looking how my parents are and how my brothers are, I think I think I'm more in line of who I'm supposed to be. It so happens that like, you know, my brothers chose we chose different paths. Mm-hmm. But just looking at the way my parents raised us and what, how we all turned out, I'm pretty much I feel like I'm kind of in line with where we are just i'm the artistic one mm. it's not like i'm like some i'm not some wildly different you know uh uh fucking just oddball compared to the rest of my family yeah it's, i just happen to be the the free spirit definitely but i'm but if you see us all hanging out together but like, oh yeah they're all they're all related you can tell yeah so yeah i don't think i think i'm i'm more in line with what who I'm supposed to be just mm. I might be more of a free spirit than other people would expect, but yeah, I can see that. Yeah. On the, on the change of subject real quick. One part in the movie that caught my attention. Then we think about you and laugh was when Gwen was in his room and picked up his, um, action figures. <laughs> and he just ripped it out the package. <laughs> I said that that was a rock. He go fucking crazy. <laughs> Bro. Not necessarily, about, not necessarily about the figures, but if it was the shoes, I'd be like, Mm-hmm. Oh, when, when this woman had his shoes on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wearing my shoes? He goes, Well, we're the same size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Cross Spider Verse. Fucking amazing movie. Indeed. All right. Well, as always, uh, this is the latest episode of Surat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Again, it's your boy Surat, a.k.a. Makazi. And your boy Chris Brown, a.k.a. Red Ford Delta. We're out. And don't throw up like Chris. <laughs> you did. You did. You're not going to live it down. You're not going to live it down. The, the man who fu- drinks day to night, the look, man the who fu- drank day and night, day to night, look, the is first, the only person that threw up. The first fucking time in 15 fucking years. Hey, hey. Yep. And I ain't going to let you forget it. Mom ain't going to let you forget it either. No, hell no, she ain't.
she, she, she was like, you throwing up? <laughs> I was like, get away from me, but I don't, leave me alone. <laughs> Let me have this moment. <laughs> I'm fucked up right now. <laughs> oh, man.